Good evening. My name's Carol Curtis. Um, I'm with the Texas Master Gardeners, which happens to be an extension of Texas A&M. As you see there, it says my name's Captain Carol Curtis. My real job is a merchant marine officer. I went to a maritime school where I learned to navigate ocean-going cargo ships such as tankers, container ships, and car carriers across the world. I did that for 30 years. Uh, made it all the way up to captain, sailed as captain on 900 foot long car carrier to Kuwait and back. I retired about five years ago and now I teach maritime to career men um, at to Texas a and or at uh, San Jacinto Maritime Center. And I also do speeches for that as well where I actually tell about my life as a merchant marine officer and I do that to rotary clubs and or professional organizations as well. I actually got a book coming out in a month for uh, about my memoirs of being the only woman on board these cargo ships. It was not an easy job, I can tell you right now. So I'm here to talk about composting today and to remind you that composting is basically recycling. Naturally, we're taking food and we're return returning it into the earth and using it to, gr to grow more food. Um, so compost is the natural decay of organic waste. Now organic means anything that used to be alive. So any kind of plant matter that used to be alive, any kind of animal matter also that used to be alive can be composted. And the beauty of it is that it, when it decays, it becomes a nice thick humus called compost. Okay, this humus is like the structures of the dirt. It's the fiber of the dirt. So when you compost, you're actually speeding up the decay process. Um, by using a compost pile or bin, you have to give this compost about three things. Air, water, food, and it's important that a certain temperature gets reached. By managing these four things, you can speed up an otherwise naturally slow process. And what's the point of composting? Well, for one, each household ends up putting in the landfill 650 pounds of food that could have been composted. And who wants more landfills? Do you want a landfill in your backyard? I don't think so. So if we can reduce the amount of stuff we put in the landfill and yet and have a valuable instrument or a valuable commodity with the compost that can help your plants to grow, then wouldn't that be better for both sides? Landfills are taking up a lot of space. Garbage handling is the fourth largest expensive for cities, and it's just another waste of food and paper. Now remember, paper is organic because it used to be a tree. So as you can see, of the landfills, 13% is from yard waste, and 11.9% is from food waste. You combine those two together, and you can make some good compost. So what do you need? For one, to make compost. For one, you need decomposers, and what those are are microorganisms. Now, you don't have to go around looking for microorganisms. They're already naturally everywhere. They're all over our skin. They're all over any piece of food. You just throw a piece of food out there, and the microorganisms will come. So the decomposers, the ones that are eating the food to decompose it, are microorganisms, are natural in the environment. So then, since we, need, we have microorganisms, they need food. So the food is what we're throwing away. And then what you need now, just like any living object, a microorganism is a living cell. So it needs food, air, and water. So we've already talked about the food, the microorganism. So now we have to manage the air and the water. So if you build it, they will come, the microorganism. So the kind of things you're going to use is soil. You're actually going to use some soil. That's okay. It's a good way to get it started. Leaves, food scraps, manure. Believe me, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of microorganisms in manure, and it really kick-starts it. In fact, in fact, manure is one of the best things you could use because, again, it, was, it has already been de decomposed. It's been eaten. It was, it was alive hay or grass. It was, it's been eating, let's say cow manure, okay? It's been eaten, it's been digested, so it's already been broken down. And by the time it gets excreted, it's nice, nice down in the microorganisms already. It's already in small things, small parts, so that these small parts eventually will be eat, taken up by the roots of the plants. If they're too big, the plant roots can't take them up. So we want it to be all broken down, and so manure is one of the best things because it's already broken down. Um, each of these will add microorganisms to the compost pile. So in one teaspoon, you're going to have 100 million bacteria. So again, you don't have to be looking for the 
the, the microorganisms, and 800 feet of fungal threads. They're there. You don't have to worry about that. Um, you can add uh, numerous additives and starters are available, but what's the point? If you've already got 800 million bacteria, why should I buy a box of bacteria or compost starter? They'll sell it to you if you want, but if you, re if you listen to me, I've now saved you 15 bucks in buying a microorganism for a compost. So what is the best food? Well, the best food is, again, anything that used to be alive, anything. So you have um, garden trimming, so any type of trimmings on your trees or your bushes or even grass. Kitchen scraps, those are also very good. Grass clippings and leaves. You can also use potting soil, sawdust, hair. You know a hair salon? Ask them to give you the hair. It used to be alive, right? It was on your head. Hair, straw. The ones you want to avoid, and, and it's not for what you think. The ones is like oil, fat, grease, and meat, and 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 fish and dairy, but only because they attract pests. Now, if you're doing this in your backyard, yeah, okay, then don't put this meat and this um, gra uh, fish and grass because the, the pests, the, you know, the possums and the raccoons will come after it. But if you're out in the, out in the farm and you don't care what eats your, your compost, it doesn't matter, then you can actually compost it. In fact, they were telling me that during Ike, there was a turkey farm out here somewhere that it got so flooded that all 3,000 turkeys drowned. And they just piled them up in a compost and composted them. They just piled them up in a pile and composted them. So even live an or animals can, carcasses can be composted. Now, there are some ones that you don't want to put in, such as hard to kill weeds, because if you compost them, then they're going to end up sprouting weeds in your garden. You don't really want that. So weeds or weed seeds, you don't want to do that. Also, if you have an, a garden clipping that has bugs on it or, or some kind of uh, infestation of, of uh, scale or this kind of stuff, you might not want to use those because it could spread throughout your compost pile. So those ones that are diseased, go ahead and throw those away. But the ones that are just regular gr grass clippings or things off your trees or your leaves, you can go ahead and use. They want you to avoid cat and dog waste, again, because they can attract other pests. And they say it could spread diseases, but it's rare. So even though you can use it, they, they suggest you don't. Could infect or attack garden plants when compost is used. All right, uh, lime, you don't want to use lime such as this uh, ashes out of, or wood ash, add sparingly. You can use wood ash that is out of a fireplace or something, but you want to do it sparingly to compost because it will increase the pH and the ammonia odor problem. So just sparingly on those two. Otherwise, the people ask, is shredding necessary? Well, it helps. It helps to break it down if it's in small pieces, but do you have to? No, you don't have to, but it helps. It allows the microbes to get to the food better. It gives them more surface area once it's chopped up. It's going to make it compost faster, but who wants to go buy a $150 shredder? I mean, there's, you can get a cheap one like that. But smaller particles also decrease the airflow. Now, remember we said we wanted air? Well, if you just keep piling and piling and piling, then the top part is just going to compact down to the bottom part, and it's going to cut off the air to the microbes at the bottom. So, so having smaller pieces will compact it faster, whereas larger pieces will allow it to get air circulation through it. More about food. So, of course, your decomposers, which are your microorganisms, they need carbon-rich and a nitrogen-rich material. So the browns are carbon-rich and the greens are nitrogen-rich, and I'll explain what a brown and a green is. Now, the brown stuff, now this is really easy to remember because you want 50 50. So you want 50% browns, which are leaves, straw, paper, sawdust, and animal bedding. Dead stuff, basically, right? Leaves are dead, straw is dead, paper's dead, sawdust is dead. They're brown and they're dry, right? And then you want greens, which is high nitrogen stuff, such as vegetable scraps, coffee grounds. Go to Starbucks and ask them for some of their coffee grounds, and they'll give you used coffee grounds, no problem. Free and manure, which is moist, and grass clippings, which is moist. Now, the secret, and if anyone tells me they have a compost pile that's not working, I'm going to tell them there's, only two, there's mainly two reasons. One, you don't have a mixture of 50-50. See, that's something I learned when I took the, comp the, the compost course. You want to layer it, too. You want to put a layer 
of browns with an equal layer of greens, a layer of browns and an equal layer of greens. So what I do is I take my kitchen scraps down there and I lay it over my pile and then I got a bag of leaves that I took off someone's yard. I took their bag on trash day and brought them over and I put the equal amount of leaves on it and spread it out. And then the next time I take my garden scraps, I spread leaves over it, garden scraps, leaves. And you get a nice layer like this, and that makes the uh, compost good because it's nitrogen and carbon rich, and it makes the decomposers happy because they got dry food and wet food. So the browns, they just, since they're dried out and dead already, they decay very slowly. They're coarse, which is good because the coarseness allows the air to circulate around. And remember, these microorganisms need air and what else did I say? Air and water. We're going to get to that next. Uh, they tend to accumulate in the fall, browns, right, the leaves. And they tie up the nutrient in the soil if it's not fully composted. And you may need to stockpile until you can mix with greens. So really, I have my husband pick up one bag of leaves per year. You know, I go around and I find it. And I said, that's the one. Go get that one. And he picks it up. And I use that one all year, all year, because I don't have a lot of kitchen scraps. Now the greens, they're the wet stuff, they're the banana peels and the cores and everything that you throw down the garbage disposal. They decay very rapidly, they compact, so they, they are poor for aeration. They tend to accumulate in the spring and the summer, they supply good nitrogen, and they're best with mixed with browns. Now, composting with the composters that need oxygen is the fast way to make high quality because if you have enough air in there, then it doesn't produce a foul odor. One of the reasons I put my kitchen scraps down on top and, and then leaves on top of that is because the leaves will keep the odors in. Aerobic, that's aerobic meaning macro, microorganisms that need air, produce heat. They eat food and food is considered calorie and believe it or not, calorie is a form of heat. It's actually a measurement of heat, so when you eat, food, it creates calories in your body, which is heat, which is why we're warm-blooded. So the act of composting takes, uh, occurs between 55 and 155. If you don't do anything to your pile, and if it's got enough water and air, now we've talked a lot about air, we haven't talked about water yet, then it should be, it should actually rise in temperature. You could put your hand on the side of your compost bin, if you wanted to buy one, and feel the warmth of the air. And this is good. This is saying that the microorganisms are happy, they're eating, they got food, water, and air, and they're actively decaying. The pile temperature may not increase above 140, but this is too hot for most bacteria, and decomposition will slow until temperatures decrease again. You can use a thermometer, but you don't need it. I don't bother. Does my compost pile have to get hot? Not really. A good compost can be made in a pile that never gets hot, but the decay will be slower. And if there's not enough air or too little or too much water or, or too many browns in the mix, then that could keep the pile from uh, heating and decomposing. So it's not really necessary. I don't pay attention to, to the temperature that much. Uh, a high pile temperature provides the most benefit because it can rapidly decompose and it kills pathogens such as disease-causing organisms and it will kill certain weed seeds but not all weed seeds. Now getting air to your decomposers is very important. I've stressed that quite a bit. So a, a mesh like that would be is very useful and that way air gets underneath it and as the warm air rises it sucks in hot air here at the bottom because maybe you can see or maybe you can't. It's sitting on a pallet board. You see that? So as the warm air rises, fresh, fresh air is getting underneath it and helping those microorganisms to breathe because, again, if they're in a big old soggy pile of, of compost or decaying stuff, they're not going to have a chance to breathe. So you want to be able to get air from both sides and wind is okay. Now, some people will tell you you've got to turn your pile over. Well, it all depends. It all depends. If you have something like this where air gets to it all the time, it's, it's not a problem. But if you have too many greens or it's too wet, then you might want to put things that help aerate it, such as sticks. This corn stalk is in there. It just makes opening so that the air can get down there. There's actually a tube with a hole in it. And I can't tell what that other one is, a pipe or something like that. So this just helps to get air down to the center of the pile because some of us don't want to sit there and turn over our pile and you don't have to. You don't have to. As long as you have 50-50, I'm telling you, it's going to work out great. 
But if you decide you want to speed up the, the decomposing, then you can use this tool where you put it down and twist it around and it stirs it up and aerates it a little bit more. Now, food, air, and water are three minimum needs as well, right? We're, a more, we're an organism, but these microorganisms need air and water. So again, if your, if your compost pile is not working, I'm going to tell you it's because of two things. You don't have 50-50 brown and green, and you don't have enough water. So once I put my kitchen scraps down, spread it out, put my leaves down, spread it out, I go and clean up my, my pot of kitchen, where my kitchen scraps were, fill it up with water, and then I pour it all over. You got to give them water. They, they're microorganisms. They, they need to live. And the moisture in the greens is not enough moisture to feed the, the, their needs for, in the water. So uh, rapid decomposition requires optimum water content. If too dry, the bacteria will slow down. If too wet, then you're going to lose the air piles. So it should be about 40 to 60 percent. So what you're going to do is you're going to, if you want, I, I don't normally want to. <laughs> you can put your hand down there and squeeze it. If it's like a wet sponge, if it's as wet as a squeezed out sponge, then that's right. But um, if it's too dry, add water as you turn your pile. If it's too wet, add browns, right? Add browns if it's too wet. So you really can't get it too wet. If someone tells me their pile is not working, it's, not, it's taken three years to decompose, I don't even have to go look at it. I'm, ju I'm just going to say it's not wet enough. Or all you've got in there is browns, right? Do you have any greens? Do you have any grass clippings? Oh, yeah. go. That's right. I get one thing of grass clippings. Actually, if you wanted to get a compost, you could go take someone's pile of grass clippings and someone else's pile of leaves and layer them, layer, 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 and you'll already have a pile this big, right? Each one of those bags is like this, right? You could layer, but don't forget to layer it. That's the key, is to layer, 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 about that thick or something with equal amounts on top. So once you get it going, the most rapid decomposing is achieved by mixing browns and greens, regular turning, which, which again just gets air in there, and controlling the water content. When the pile no longer heats up after mixing, then, you, then that's why you see people have three bins. Then once it's stopped heating up, then you can put it into another bin and start a new compost pile. Um, you can turn the pile every five to seven days. I never do. During the first weeks, the temperature should get 140. Then after four weeks, uh, much less. So basically in four weeks, it should have decomposed to a point where it's ready to go to the second stage, which is right there in the center. After about four more weeks, the pile will no longer heat after turning, and the volume will be one-third of the original. Once it gets to be one-third of the original, then you know it's just about ready. Allow the pile to cure another four weeks before using it. Now, when your compost looks like dirt, then it's ready. If you can still see eggshells, it's not ready. If you can still see peanut shells, it's not ready. Or actually, those take a little bit longer to break down. If you can still see a banana peel or, a or onion skins or anything, if you can still s recognize anything in your hand, then it's not ready. You need to let it decompose a little bit more until it looks like dirt. When it's ready, it's dark, dark brown color. It's crumbly, loose, and humus-like. It smells like earth. It doesn't smell like rotten eggs or anything like that. Uh, it contains no readily recognizable pieces, and it has shrunk to about one-third. Another bag test you can do is you seal it in a bag for a couple days. If, it op if you open it up after a couple days and it has a foul odor, then that means it's still decomposing. Or another way to do it is close it up in a bag and put a, put a seed in there and see if the seed germinates. This would be a very good way to see how good your compost is. So where are you going to put it? Well. Because we live in neighborhoods, it should be in an area that will help it prevent from drying out in the summer. So the shade is OK, because really most people's dry, uh, compost piles are too dry. Uh, avoid areas that will interfere with the lawn and garden activity. So of course, you don't want to put it right next to the shed or someplace where you're gonna, it's going to get in your way. Adequate work area around it, uh, an area for storage, and make sure you can put it where water can get available, such as a hose or something like that. Um, of course, you want to keep it out of the out eyesight of your neighbors if they might get upset. It looks ugly or something like that. Good drainage away from any wells, near where finished compost will be used. I mean, so if the kitchen's way over there and your compost is way over there, you might never take it out there. So near where you're going to put the comp get the, uh, the greens. 
and be a good neighbor. Make it attractive or out of your neighbor's view so they don't have to look at your rotting compost pile. Um, you can, uh, an ideal size is about three foot cube because that allows good aeration. It retains the heat pretty well and anything more than five feet by five feet are difficult to turn and to tend and to become anaerobic in the center because they just pile up, it's so big you can't get to the center and so you lose air and then becomes anaerobic which means without air. Uh, these are nice bins, uh, they, they don't really require you from turning anything. I have the one in the center and I don't turn it, I just keep piling it on. It just never seems to fill up because it shrinks to one third its size, right? Never fills up. In the springtime when I'm ready to plant my tomatoes and vegetables, I pull up the bottom uh, shoot and I pull out the compost. And it's usually ready by then and I can look at it and see if it's ready. And just, it's just kind of a perpetuating type system. Uh, the ones that tumble aren't as great as people think they are because because once, you're once you fill it up, you want to leave that stuff there and start another pile because you don't want to, it's not going to compact down like the ones that are on top of each other. The tumbler is just going to keep mixing. So if it's just about compost, decompose, and then you throw in fresh stuff, well, you kind of just put it back four more weeks. So you can fill it up and then, and then start a second one, let this one tumble and get down to zero while you fill up fresh stuff here and then take this one out and then when this one gets filled up, start the, that one. So you might want to use two. They're not as good as uh, people think they are. Um, again, th these are really good. You just keep putting it on top. He does have that tool on that bottom left hand corner. He's got that tool where he's turning it. And then, and then at the end of the, uh, when you're ready to plant, you just go ahead and lift up that hatch at the bottom and pull out the compost. Now, if you do have odors, um, it's, it's very easily avoidable. Now, a rotten odor, such as putrid smell or rotten eggs, usually results from anaerobic conditions. So if it starts to smell, I'm afraid you should turn it then. That means it's not getting enough air. The, the, the mi microorganisms can't get into all that thick, gooey, nasty stuff. So go ahead and aerate it and turn it and or add browns, more porous stuff so that the air can get all the way down through your pile. If it has an ammonia odor, then that means you have too many greens. So you'll want to go ahead and add browns and possibly turn your pile. So 50-50 and water. Low pile temperatures, the pile's too small, it's cold, it's too dry, uh, poor aeration or lacks nitrogen. So make the pile bigger or insulate the side so it can warm up. Add water and turn the pile and continue to add greens and manure. Manure is pretty good. High pile temperatures, too large and insufficient ventilation, just go ahead and reduce the pile. Now, of course, again, if you have some rotten foods and you're not doing what I said and put the browns on top, then you're going to get critters into your compost pile. And if you buy one of those pre-made ones, then they have lids on them that lock so that they can't get in. Although I've picked it up and I found a mouse and I find lizards in there. No big deal. They're, micro they're just going to eat the food and poop it out, which means it's good because it's all broken down, ready to go, right? Manure. So it's okay. Don't worry about those kind of pests. In fact, bugs and beetles and all that are helping the pile. That's a good thing when they have bugs and peel. So again, you might want to avoid the fatty foods and the waste and this kind of stuff because the, the, um, the raccoons and the possums certainly can, sm can smell that. So what's the point? What are we going to use our compost for? Well, as it turns out, this is very good organic matter all broken down by the microorganisms into teeny tiny sized um, again, organisms that are going to be able to get into the roots. And when it gets into the roots, it's going to aid in the health of the plant. Um, also, my, uh, this compost attracts earthworms, and earthworms are very good for, society, for the plant sy system because they build or they eat holes through the dirt, again, allowing air to get down to the roots. People don't realize that roots need air. I know I didn't realize that until I took that class. You know, I just thought they needed lots of water, so I kept them water and my roots would rot. So you want your plants to dry out about an inch or two so that, they, they, so that the roots can get air and then fill it up, air, fill it up, air, fill it up. It's very important. It stimulates beneficial soil microorganisms. It increases soil water holding capacity and it increases the soil nutrient retention. 
What you're going to do with this compost is you're only going to put 30% in your garden. So if your garden has, you, you don't want to put more than one third compost in your dirt. So if you're going to use one or two bags of soil for your, your garden, then use one bag of compost. You can buy it. If you don't want to do this, you can buy it. If you want to fill the landfills up, go ahead. But here's also a way to do it. So it should be about 30% of your garden. Because this is going to be to improve the tilth and friability, which is the structure. The, the structure, the, the building blocks of dirt is what tilth and friability is. It improves soil drainage, again, because now it has fibrous structure. It loosens heavy clay soil, which is what we have a lot around here. So heavy clay soils, this compost will um, get in there and mix up and, and create air spaces, which is good, remember, good for your roots. And it suppresses soil-borne pathogens, which are diseases. But it's not a fertilizer. People think it's a fertilizer. It's not a fertilizer because fertilizers only have three things, potassium, uh, nitrogen, and potash. However, it's still good because it has microorganisms that are beneficial to breaking down the nutrients so that the nutrients can get into the roots. Nitrogen and phosphorus are mostly in organic form, and what's good is that it's released into the plant slowly, not readily leached from the topsoil. So your palm post contains many trace nutrients that are essential for plant growth. Again, it's an amendment. You're adding to the soil you have. You're adding 30% of that soil size in as compost. Be sure that it's mature. Again, that you can't see what's, what it's been made of. Has an earthy smell, looks dark crumbly. The compost improves soil health when mixed in the top four to six inches of your, of your garden. Work no more than a two inch layer of compost. So two inches in six inches, that's a third, right? Two inches out of six. It will improve water and nutrient retention and sandy soils and will loosen clay soils. Now, if you are trying to put compost on your yard, how are you gonna do that? You know, what are you gonna do, dig up your yard? You really can't do that. So there's a, you can use it actually as a mulch. You can put it down as a layer in your yard. Now, this is not your garden, but your yard. Let's say you wanna compost your lawn or trees. You can lay it down in a mulch about three inches deep, start three or four inches from the trunk and end out to the drip line. What people may or may not realize is that the edges of your trees indicates where the edges of your roots are. Right underneath your tree edge is the roots. So you wanna go ahead and put it around there because those are the new growing roots, which are the ones that are taking up the uh, nutrients. Lawn top dressing, you can, again, you can compost the lawn by putting a, about a quarter inch depth all over, take a screen and just shake it over your lawn. And the reason you use a screen is because you got small particles that can get in between the grass. Um, it's kind of good if the lawn is cored before applying. What they mean by that, have you seen those shoes that have spikes on them? You walk around your yard and you put, spot, you put holes in your yard and then you sprinkle the compost and of course the holes make aeration too, which is good for your yard. And then the compost can get down deeper into your lawn, supposedly. Uh, retains moisture and again, slowly releases the nutrients. Uh, potting mix, the compost must be very mature and once again, no more than one third. So if you take, get potting soil, you wanna make it even better. I mean, look, look on the bag. If it says it's got compost or 30% organic matter, then you don't need to add compost. More or less, you're gonna use these in your garden that's been there for 10 years or five years and haven't been improved. You know, go ahead and put some compost in there. Go buy a bag if you wanna get started, it helps. Okay, so again, this is Texas AgriLike Extension. We have uh, all kinds of websites that talk all about gardening, all kinds of videos on, on YouTube. Uh, we even have an Ask a Master Gardener. If you have any kind of gardening questions, you can email us or call us, and we will get back to you. We have volunteers that sit there and are supposed to answer everything. And if they don't, of course, if they don't know the answer, they're supposed to sit there and research it. And if they can't answer it, then they go over to the experts next door and ask them. But in the research, you actually learn more about it.